Hi guys. Hey everyone. Welcome well, to another installment of uh, live intuitive Q and A with B Quest and John and John. I'm John and I'm John and he's John. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so anyone out there who's got um, questions about intuitive life issues, health issues, um, anything like that, um, we use a combination of intuitive and psychic um, abilities to come up with most of these questions. We also have um, basic techniques for reading different life situations that hones our intuition a bit more. So um, if you've got any reoccurring problems, if you've got health issues, um, anything, any issues, basically. Anything really? Yeah, so just <laughs> basically ask away. And if you want to come on live, then that's you're welcome to come on live. If you've got Zoom, the link's up so, on the right-hand corner. Anything, any issues, basically. Anything really? Yeah, so, sorry, we're just adjusting sound here. <laughs> so joys of using Zoom and Facebook Live. Yes, <laughs> and now we're backwards on the camera. That's we're great. back. <laughs> so, yes, anyone. Hello, um, everyone. Hello, Lorna and Ash and um, whoever else has already said hello. Helen. <laughs> Amy. So, um, if, if you're asking questions, not so much the general questions, a little bit more specific. Um, so some, I just noticed somebody asked something about career. Yeah, um, Emma. 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 Hi, Emma. Just um, what do you mean particularly? It, it helps us if you, I mean, a lot of it with the intuitive, it's it's a bit more on feedback level. So we can hone you. So we, we want to get you the answers right for you from yeah. you. Yeah. So it helps if you can give us a little bit more clarity or a little bit more de definition of a question like that. So, so, for example, it could be, you know, if it's a particular job over another job or if there's an yeah. area that you feel you maybe you need to work on for your career, um, it could be money related, it could be, you know, workplace related. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing would help yeah. us. Because um, the full the full psychic one's a bit more of a personal one where we need like half an hour per person. So that's a bit too much in this um, short, this is short Q&A. Um, Okay, we've got one from Ash here. I uh, would love to know where my endometriosis comes from. Endometriosis. Now, but uh, can you? Ref <laughs> I don't know all the medical terms, so if you can give me a little bit of clarity, Ash, on what endometriosis is again. Um, what can what? Endometriosis what, is that the in the stomach lining? Uh, I can't remember. Wait, I think maybe. Is that like a irritability? Is that irrit irritability in the stomach? Um, maybe, yeah. So just yeah, fill us in a little bit more on what that is, and we'll try and. Um, uh, always, always issues with the relationships, Chris, Krista. So <laughs> the issues that always issues, I will, I'm guessing basically the issues that come up in our relationships are the same issues we have with ourselves internally. Yeah. So the relationships are like all of life is mostly a reflection, right? So, um, if you tell us what the main issues are, we can possibly help you to, um see where they are in you and because they won't be in the same area it'll be the yeah. same base core issue but it won't be not won't necessarily be in the same area so for things like that you can ever, anyone's welcome to come on live and chat with us so we can hone it down and get it a bit more specific and get you to the actual issues that are there um so because like you might have many relationship issues a lot of the relationship issues are just reoccurring things from childhood that we haven't dealt with with our own parents the mm. drama control dramas as we like to yep, yep. get stuck into them every <laughs> now and then um it could yeah. also be like fixed points of view like yeah. the, the use of the word always there yeah you know um the spoken word and the power of the yeah. spoken word right which is a lot of, of what we've been working on this week um you know if you're constantly telling yourself that you always had this problem and i've always got this problem in my relationship or this always goes wrong or they always do this yeah. then you're basically programming your subconscious with images of what is always going to go wrong yeah so okay. when you say always issues and, and you don't when we say spoken word or thoughts sometimes you have thought feelings you've had these thoughts so frequently in the past that you don't even think them anymore they're just a feeling that's constantly running in the background like a program in the back of a computer that's running so um um about um, shasta with anemia shasta anemia Where does anemia, anemia come from so anemia is the the lack of iron in the blood isn't it mm -hmm. um so anemia well it's going to be weak blood so weak blood is the life force so anemia comes from um your blood is your life force energy which relates to your prana and everything else mm -hmm. so the energetic side of that would be things like you're not 
retaining your power in your in your life force. So in your daily actions and stuff like that, you're giving away your power in a lot of areas. It might be with work or relationships or children or mm. um, socially or whatever. But I'm, I'm guessing there's a anemia. The blood gives the uh, the the iron gives the blood a lot of like power and energy. So and that's a a reflection of our prana of our energy in our life force. So you probably go through times where you feel like you're in power and you're using your power and deciding for yourself, uh, or you might not do that at all. Mm. <laughs> that, that might be the main one. Could also a, be other um, other symptoms in the body, right? Possibly the neck or the back. Yeah. Perhaps like as, as to an indication of where. Maybe yeah, the as power to, yeah away. where you're giving away your power. Neck yeah. and back kind of come If through you've got other, other issues, yeah, like in back problems, especially any spine problems. Yeah. And that'll relate to the chakras and that'll give you give us a much more specific indication of um where you're giving your power away yeah. but it'll be a, it'll be a power issue it's about applying yep. your power about being strong in how you direct your energy in your life that'll be the main issue but yeah. it would have again this would be one if you came on live if anyone who wants to come on live the zoom link is at the top you just yeah. click the zoom click the link click the link It'll and tech. just come online and have a chat ask a question and we'll bring you on and we can chat face to face with you anyone that's willing to do that um, Who's game? <laughs> and uh, so we've got another one. Another here. one from uh, Lucia. Uh, we'd love some insights about having headaches for the last two months. Um, it's about, it's about sorry, high I'm energies, um, unexplained high blood pressure for four days, then back to normal. Yeah. So headaches is it the Lucy Lucia? Yeah, Lucia. Is it Lucia? Is it the back of the head or the front of the head, or one side of the headaches? Um, if you can just give us a quick indication of that. The high energy and the blood pressure. That is, there's a lot of changes going on on a mm. global level, on a consciousness level. So that's going to bring a lot of issues up to the force. So the high levels and the high blood pressure. That's a lot of stuff about not listening to your heart. One of my yeah. favourite subjects because it's <laughs> one of the ones I've recently had to fix. So um, yeah, the blood pressure side of it is not listening to your heart. Headaches is generally holding on to old limitations. So you've got fixed points of view or old limitations. So if it's the front of your head, so if you indicate um, Lucia a bit further if it's the front of the head or the back of the head we'll come back to that and um, so yeah generally speaking the front of the head is issues about what you're seeing what you're doing now the back of the head headaches in the back of the head are holding on to old limitations about the past so things that how you think life should be or what people should do and all that and in general John like when someone's got a headache um, whether it's front or back um, what, what would be the process to work through um, the process to work through is just letting go of your, like the simple process is like saying our, our favorite tool is, I don't know. I don't know. We think about all the things that we think should happen or shouldn't, should be happening or shouldn't be happening or the things that we think are right or wrong or bad. And we don't know the whole picture. You don't know every lifetime. Good luck, bad luck. You don't yeah. know the whole story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so most people have heard that good luck, bad luck. You don't know the whole story. Yeah. Um, one, so it's, you don't know that you're judging from this point of view, mm. you know, you, you can't judge your life until you're at the end of it. You know, it's like, you know, you don't count your money while you're sitting you at the table, as, you, the, as the old gambler used to say, <laughs> for the people of our generation. But yeah, so it can just be a, a case of accepting, you know, that you're willing, the willingness to, to let go of whatever that limiting belief or limitation yeah. is, right? Yeah. Um, and so that, that will relate a lot to the high blood pressure as well. Yeah. Um, and this week, particularly, I don't know if, I think it's a general thing, but there's a lot of, energy being pushed onto relationships for the last week oh, the emotional and it's stuff. even it's even stretched our relationship this week <laughs> quite <laughs> quite to the end it's like <laughs> wanted to kill each other at one stage kill this bastard a couple um, times this week. <laughs> so you know there's been a lot of energy around about checking on your relationships where you want to go and reinventing them mm-hmm. and changing the way where you think they should go how you think they should look and stuff like that mm-hmm. so the blood pressure is definitely going to be a big part of the headaches and the blood pressure are going to be two aspects of that are going to be tied into the same thing, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, same has got back through, about, about, it's about a change in jobs, so there's a career direction. Yeah, so the, the simplest way to do it is, does it feel light? So one of our tools, it feels mm-hmm. light, if it feels heavy, that's how we check our intuition. So when we say it feels light, light feels like expansive, mm-hmm. light feels like nothing. It's hard to feel the light. It is hard to feel light sometimes. But because light's so light, you don't know if you're light. <laughs> you feel so light, you go, I'm I'm light. I, I feel like I, I don't feel like I'm feeling anything. It's like, wow, that's great. You feel that's super yeah. light when you can't feel nothing. But there's there's a the difference between not feeling anything like yeah, like void and not feeling nothing like you can't 
feel like you can't touch yeah. the edges. And so, so it's a case of just working through those questions so for yourself, right? So you, you, I you usually, know. in that case, if there's a change of jobs, if there's two options, go, is which option is going to work out the best for me in the long run? Is it the current job stay there a bit longer? Is it the new job? Or is there another possibility, or is there another possibility that right. I haven't seen yet or that could come up? And yeah. then you ask those three and go, the current job, nah, that doesn't feel too light. The, the change of jobs, yeah, that feels lighter. But maybe there's another option. Is it, oh, there's another option that actually feels lighter. So maybe you need to wait just a little yeah, bit I'm longer. I'm getting more of the third one. I'm getting more of the third one too. I think I'm getting there's more. Another, there's another option that hasn't been presented. There's yet. another option that's in the, in the very near that mm. hasn't actually quite been given yet. Mm. But um, so if you can hold off on the decision, yeah. just hold off a little bit longer and keep your eyes and ears open or renegotiate one of yeah. the jobs. Yeah. That's the other, that's the other possibility that that could be. Maybe take, take maybe. a step back and just reassess both of yeah. them and, you know, just, um, just and see, oh, maybe there's a certain aspect of one or the other that you didn't, you know, um, acknowledge or that you didn't maybe think of. Yeah. You know? So in the um, sales world, they call it um, the, Dutch auction. You you get the two jobs to fight against each other and get better better um, qualities out. Yeah, of it. but it's a classic case of um, you know checking in with the inner guru as we yeah. call it, right? And and just going off how you feel when you ask yourself those questions. Sometimes we want to change the jobs because we're not getting what we want, but we change the jobs and it gives us a temporary relief. But we take our patterns back in, so we're going to look yeah. at the patterns of why we want to change. So again, that would be a much better one to do a. A live, a live and, we, and we've still got three more free lives for anyone who wants to, uh, free half an hour lives for anyone who wants to come live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, if you comment in, um, in on the BeQuest page um, and say you want a live reading, we've still got three more of those to give away. Yep. So the first three people to comment will get a free half an hour reading if they're willing to do it live face to face, live and leave face, -to -face, -face yeah. as a promotion. That's right. So, um, but yeah, we can hone that down quite a lot because a lot of the times when we change houses or jobs or whatever, Gives us temporary relief because we're changing our outside patterns, but we haven't changed the inside pattern, mm. which has created why it's not the best anyway. Yeah. That's so right. if you can do both at once, it's fantastic. Oops, so scrolling down. So we just come to another one here. Sorry, I'm under the spotlight here. I'm not very good under. <laughs> he sweats a lot under the hot lights. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. I wasn't um, there. Um, Amy's asking, what do I need to do to be able to practice sound therapy? To be able to practice sound therapy, hmm. well. There's lots of different sound therapy. The simpler one to do is just to practice your own um, sound meditations, first mm, of all. We've been doing a lot of this, right? Yeah, so you do a, sound, a hearing sound meditation. Basically, you the, the old technique we used to do back in the 90s, back when I'm not showing my age now, um, <laughs> we'd, you'd sit in meditation and then you'd focus on the external noises as far as you can, like we're near the ocean, so say listening to the ocean and mm. listening to the cars off in the distance. And then you listen to the things closer to the room and the buzzing of the TV, as I can hear on the left here, mm -hmm. or, you know, just your breathing and stuff. And then you li listen. The sound of sweat dripping down his forehead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the sound of sweat just dripping onto the earlobe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, then you, you try and pay attention to how you focus on those things and, and, you, and you name them. So that's another sound, naming the ocean. Oh, that's the ocean. Oh, that's the birds. That's the cars. That's another sound. That's you talking to yourself. That's mm. a voice as such. And then you start to, like you start to ignore the ocean sounds, they're still there, or you're ignoring the sounds in the room or the birds outside or whatever. Then you start ignoring that voice. And that gets you into the sound more and more, listening to the sound from your heart. And that's another one of our favorite ones is actually mm -hmm. just play around with your senses. So listen with your eyes and see with your ears or, you know, Listen with your listen with your with your nose with your smell. Um, look look with your taste. Just play around with your play senses. around with your senses. And you just know? just make it fun just, though. And really. and like don't analyze that, right? No. Just you know? say, just, I wanna, just say. I wonder I if wonder. I can. I wonder if I can see out of my ear, mm. see with my hearing, mm. or I wonder if I can if I can taste with my sight. Mm. Just use those things. No, just, that sounds crazy, but when you do it, and you just play with it, and just go and stay in the wonderment of it. Don't yeah. say it's true or the right. false. Just wonder. With all of these things, it's like. If you believe or you disbelieve, you're going to try and make it happen or try and make it not happen. So you try and get to what we call the neutral space or mm -hmm. the, I call it wonderment. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's possible. I wonder if I could actually see with my taste buds. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, mm -hmm. and you just go there and you just sit with that. And, but the sound, the sound pr healing practices, um, I mean, using the stuff on YouTube, what are they called? The binaural beats, um, using the headphones with the binaural beats. 
really isolate the left and right hearing. So that's going to enhance your sound therapy stuff. That would be the first place I would start. You really yeah. work a lot more with binaural beats because they really isolate the left and right and they really sort of hone in that sound healing. Yeah. One, one and thing, use your chakras. Yeah. So. You know, one thing, um, you know, we don't come into the world with sound bowls, yeah. sheen bowls yeah. and tarot cards and crystals and yeah. stuff. While, while they're all good, um, you know, um, aids or permission slips, as, as some people call them, you know, work with what you have in terms of sound, you know, so listening yeah. to yourself um, and, and try that. Try and do a meditation where you can just start, you know, examining the sounds around you limiting them all back and then see what else you can hear. And yeah. as John said, play, play around with your senses and see, see what you can hear from others. So, senses. and I think the solar plexus is the one that relates to hearing, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. a lot of solar plexus stuff for any sound watch is the um, yellow sun chakra. So using the fire element, using um, the color yellow, that's all going to strengthen the sound hearing aspect in you. So um, using the yellow solar plexus, or even wearing some yellow clothes or mm. yellow undergarments or whatever, um, will also help with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to come on live, if they've got anything they want to go a bit more in depth with, we can ask them questions and we can really bounce it back and forth and get down to the core of issues really fast. Like so this next one. The, Linda, can you see anything housewise has been desperately wanting our own home forever? Yeah. So those words there tell you that mm -hmm. you're really not going to get it for starters. Mm -hmm. Des desperately wanting it. All right. So the wanting word, the desperately yep. And forever, those are very fixed words and they create subconscious blockages. Mm -hmm. So you're telling the universe you haven't got it, the desperate feeling mm -hmm. and the one and saying forever, this is the subconscious mind picks all of these words up and, and they don't necessarily, it'll pick feelings up and turn them into words. It'll pick yeah. emotions up and turn them into words. So that statement, the way that that's said, even though your conscious mind doesn't believe that, yep. that's the subconscious mind's running off that. So. Stop wanting it and choose it. Say, so, okay, I don't know how we yeah, can get our own make house. A decision. Just, you've got to make the decision that yeah. you've got your own house. Start make, taking the actions and go, okay, feel what it'd be like in your new house, where you are now. If you're renting, just go, okay, imagine if I own this house. Every day, try and use your imagination. Go, if I own this house, what would I do? Yeah. How would I treat it? And start looking at the houses and looking at the little things that you can get now for the house and start treating it like you've already got the house mm. and make the decision. Don't wait and Till you've got the money it's like look at the houses and look at and don't try and go into the how, what we call the, the how-tos how that's the that's the biggest trap on all this mm -hmm. stuff is the how-tos mm -hmm. oh i need a loan i you know i've got no idea how i can do it yeah but i know if i focus on it and i relax relax, re relax is the is the big key <laughs> relax, the word of the just month. relax <laughs> yes <laughs> relax, relax. So, so just think about it so when anything normally turns up in your life it's the stuff like if you go out and you always get something, think of that. How do you always get something yeah. you always get? Whether Some people get jobs all the time. Some people get parking spots all the time because yep. they think about it and then they let it go. Yep. They think about it, they want it, and then they let it go. And it's like, so that wanting and that desperately, that's like send the rocket off and then just open up and go, I don't know, I show don't. me the best house, show me the best place. Am I in the right place? Is there anything else inside me mm -hmm. I need to let go of? But anytime you grab at something, yep you're pushing it away. It's like a bar of soap. You grab it, it keeps popping out of your hands. I know so, it seems counterintuitive, but that's that's what the subconscious is going to build your reality around you. So the, all those words desperately, and, and as I said, they're not words per se, they're feelings, but they create words in the subconscious. So um, these are all little issues about it. Um, yeah, so the back to Ash, the endometriosis, it was some issues with... Um, uh, tissue growth in the stomach, very painful. I think my um, my ex-wife had yeah. the same thing. Yeah, can't can, stop. Can can stop fertility. All right. So yeah, a lot of stomach issues. So when you go into Chinese medicine, um, Biggest, um, upper digestive. Too. Yeah. So upper stomach, digestive. stomach and upper digestive. So you have got a lot of um, there's grounding issues going to be needed there. So stomach is about overthinking, over worrying, ruminating, things like that. So mm -hmm. you're thinking and worrying too much, and it's the earth element in Chinese medicine, the five elements of Chinese medicine. So it's about being a little bit more grounded, a bit more earthy and not worrying. So worry. also you'll probably find, um, what was it, Ash? This Ash one? Yeah. yeah, so Ash, you, you've probably got, um, if it is the stomach meridian, if it is this stomach spleen meridian, I should say, and the earth element, you probably might find you have things like flat feet or prolapsed discs or saggy skin, anything to do with that sort of thing. So because the stomach earth meridian holds things up. So if you find yourself slouching a lot or if you've got like prolapsed discs or flat feet, um, so people with like saggy, droopy skin, that all comes from the, the, the earth element in the stomach spleen meridian being drained. So the only way to get beyond that is to get physically active, right? Because 
you can't think yourself to stop thinking. <laughs> so <laughs> you're thinking too much, I'm guessing, because if it's mainly in the stomach, the digestive one is slightly different. If yeah. It's going to be the um, small intestine and that would be the large intestine, wouldn't it be? So it might be yeah. lung issues. Yeah. So it'd be lung issues, which would do with grief as well. So that would be probably com combining with it, I'm guessing, um, if it is in the upper tract and it's causing, if it's going down to cause infertility. Yeah, but again, again, infertility is, is going to be a lot to do with over worrying, thinking too much is too much thought energy going on, mm. and you can't stop that by grounding base chakra too. Right? Yeah, so active meditation is, yeah. is the best way. So things like tai chi or yoga, um, things that make you concentrate and move, yeah. or just walking, but walking quickly, not walking where you can still think. Walk where you're focused. Yeah, not off with the fairies. Yeah, but if you're if you're a bit more sporty, like I'm not. You can go and <laughs> run and play soccer or something like that. I don't You've know. You've been jumping over the couch lately. Like yeah, I know. I'm getting back to sporty. <laughs> so, um, um, right, keep going. Yeah, we'll move on. Twitch. Uh, my back is twitching and itching sporadically for no apparent reason. Can you feel a presence there or is it a dietary issue? Trish, Trish Rock. Is it Trish Rock? Trish Rock, yeah. Okay, Trish Rock. Spasm. Is it, is it in the middle? Is it just below the heart chakra? Is it in um, solar plexus area, Trish? Um, it's where I'm sort of feeling. So is it entities? No, no. Yes, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Why is it yes and no? Created, is, that a, is it a created, uh, it's a created, created entity? So you've created an entity. So that's your, you could be created an entity, personality, a, a health type person you are, that's a created entity. Yep. Um, being a smoker or being a drinker or being anything. These are entities we create. They're put like personalities we create on ourselves. So that one, you can just say, we can destroy and uncreate that entity. Uh, but the sporadic um, twitching and that, twitching and the itching are often good mm. signs. It could be that the chakras are opening up yeah. and clearing. So um, don't automatically judge it as bad. You might be mm. judging. The, Maybe that's where the so, created entities come from. Yeah, so you it's might like... be judging it as bad because there's itching and twitching. But when the chakras open up, there is, there can be a lot of twitching at first because of new energy moving around there and the yeah. blood flow increases. There goes John's now. <laughs> well is done, that, Trish. Is that yours or hers? <laughs> <That's it. laughs> okay. so, um, so maybe just sort of say, you know. Um, so just scroll down, see if Trish has answered which part of the back it is. Um, sorry, we've got a lot of questions on here. Uh, it's on the left heart area. Left of the heart left area. Heart yeah, area. so it's okay. So um, that'll be a lot of stuff from the past about. Um, left is usually about female issues or spiritual issues. Right can be f material or um, physical. Um, so, and I'm guessing it's it'll be hard opening work. Yeah. Cool. So, so, and it's hard opening awesome. a, a, probably about yourself or your mother or your yeah. daughter. There'll be issues there because anything on the back is generally to do with the past. So, one of the one of the ways the tools that we use to get past that we go. Well, that that might whatever the feeling is, you can you can bypass the feeling and tr instead of trying to analyze what the feeling is, whatever that feeling is, it's I'm pretty sure it's about the past because it's on the back, mm -hmm. and it might have been true of me then, even if it was the me last week or last month or the me ten years ago. So when you say I've had this all the time, you haven't had it all the time, yeah, that's because right. you're a different person each day. So the pre what we call previous versions of us have had it. So a previous version of me had all this problem with my mom or all this problem with my daughter or this problem expressing myself and speaking from my heart, which it feels a bit more like that. So, you, you know, the previous you had this problem speaking from your heart. Maybe you now don't have that problem. You're recreating that problem by thinking you can't speak from your heart. So you're recreating it because on the back of the heart chakra, the, then you're actually recreating that you're not listening to your heart or you're not speaking from your heart enough. And, and when, in fact, if you change that dialogue and say, maybe I've changed, maybe that was true before of me, but it's not true now of me. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of our techniques that we use, which will be in one of our upcoming videos on YouTube when we put that one up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so right. yeah, these are all tools and techniques, but remember guys, we do have free, three free readings to give away next week. Um, half an hour readings. If you want to come on Facebook yeah, live, because um, it is much easier to, to really delve into this because we like to work with you so you can see it because all the answers are for each of us are inside ourselves, as That's most right. of us know. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes we, it's hard to find them because we're personally attached. We, get, you know, and we're like navigators, I guess. Yeah. You know, so so we, we use our intuition to try to work through um, with you, you know, to yeah. dive into particular issues and really hone in on 
on, you know, it could be a core belief you yeah. need to let go of. It could be yeah. a, core uh, beliefs are big entities, ones. you know, yeah. because you think something's wrong and it's actually not wrong. Yeah. Things like that will help you hone in on that. So you might be saying your heart, you feel like your heart's blocked mm. when it's the opposite of that. <laughs> and you get, you're feeling the pressure there. You're feeling mm. the pressure behind the back. And it's and if you go, oh, is that because my heart's opening more? Mm. Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, it disappears. It just goes. You know, it just goes because away. you're thinking, oh, there's something wrong. I'm feeling pain. I'm feeling twitching there. And it's actually, I always ask when I'm doing that, I'll, always ask the opposite too i say mm. so or is it the opposite of that is it that it's actually going well and i'm just feeling the the shift it's like a growing pain mm, that's right so, um, um clee rose any insight i have neck back injuries um meniscus tear in my left knee <laughs> arthritis in my right iron issues and i'm healing from adrenaline burnout well that's a lot that's of stuff, lot to, of stuff there, to, to, but they do all tie in you know the first mm. four you could have been talking about me mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the neck issues generally like it, it's basically if you want to get down to it, it's communication problems it's power issues it's not speaking your truth yeah. um all of that thing it's just a congestion of not expressing your emotions or your feelings it's just not communicating whether it's emotions feelings or thoughts it's it's basically that the left knee meniscus, that's, I've torn that one a couple of times myself. Um, that's generally, again, it's about controlling your spiritual or your personal direction because I'm guessing this is female. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so left is generally got to do with female or spiritual. So it's either your spiritual direction, you're not being flexible enough in where you want to go spiritually or yeah. your personal, or you're not being flexible enough about yourself. It's about a female. So you need to... Um, be a little bit more flexible and a little bit more controlled because the meniscus does the um, controlling of the movement of the kneecap as well. Um, whereas the adrenal issues and that would tie into all of this stuff. So it's, it's basically a lot of this is just about you not directing you and your life. You've got <laughs> someone screaming at me to tell you to have more fun. Yeah. Have more fun. That's all you keep saying. Tell her to have more fun. Yeah. So whatever that means and whoever that wants, yeah. that's yours. <laughs> so that's probably your inner child because John's got to <laughs> tuning in with their have more people's fun. Have more fun. Have inner more child. Fun. So yeah. So and, and that is like the spiritual, <laughs> like the spiritual path as well as the physical path. They're not separate paths. They're both two aspects of the one path. But they, they're supposed to be fun. You know, it's like. One of the things uh, John brought up in, when we first started was about having fun. So he used to teach the meditation class. He goes, oh. So fucking boring. He goes, yeah, are you having fun? I'm like, you can't have fun meditating. What are you doing? It's meditation. Like, it's make like, it fun. <laughs> make it fun. They had me to tell him to make it fun. Because oh, I was telling him to make it fun earlier in the day. And it's like, he goes, you make it fun. And I was like, wait, you can't just meditate. It's <laughs> like, you can make it fun. You can make it fun exploring. And hmm. Fun doesn't mean excitement and, and jumping around. And screaming and laughter fun means joy as well it's not, fun means exploration it's fun yeah. because it's ex, it's like um it, it's exciting it's ex, exploring mm. things like that allison do you do you see me ever finding love again Similar, um, sort of, uh, ever finding love again no i would say not allison not <laughs> not in a bad way because i would say you've gone past finding love yeah and you're into creating love you know you, I don't think you're letting yourself find love and you won't let yourself find love until you have enough of it for yourself. We all have a divine masculine and feminine yep. aspect to ourselves. We don't, they're aspects, they're not parts. Don't break yourself up into parts. parts yes. We are just we one, are one. We are one being. We just have different aspects, like the aspects on a crystal. Mm-hmm. We just look at different parts from different angles. It's just like different viewpoints. Yep. But you, um, I would say if you're saying about finding love again, you realise you'll realize that you don't have it enough for yourself or for life and you won't put yourself back into that position to find love. But if you create the love in yourself and you don't need it anymore, that's usually when it comes. It's like when you don't need it anymore, not don't want it, but you don't need it, you go, yeah, I can have it or not have it. That's usually when it comes. But once you grow spiritually or consciously, then the rules change quite a bit and finding things and stumbling across things don't work as much. Okay, Sharon, yep. So, um, hello, boys. I would love to see Sharon Schmidt. Hope you're still there, Sharon. Yeah. Would love to do a reading around a healthy diet. Also, have recently started to have a dodgy right knee. Oh, sounds I perfect. If you want to come on Zoom, click on the Zoom link. Click on the link up top, Sharon. If you're still there, we'll bring you on when it pops up. So, on to the next one. Tracy's sent. Thank you. Okay, Debbie. First time here. Hopefully, you can tell me if and when I might be lucky in relationship side or anything else coming through. Stringers would be helpful. Um, relationship, Debbie, Debbie, 
again, I'm thinking a lot of stuff about relationships at the moment mm. going on for everyone because there is a, a big consciousness change, especially this year. Um, if the relationships are in ourselves first, if you've got to heal the relationship in yourself, <laughs> what, what have we got there? Solar plexus. Solar plexus on the left or? Yeah, more yeah, than the left. Left on the left solar plexus. So, shut down. <laughs> so Debbie. What are you um, going on down there, Debbie? So this is like personal self-esteem. It's um, your personal willpower about yourself. I'd say it's on the left side, um, but a lot of it's about self-esteem. It's about listening to yourself mind, too. Though. It's about, because solar plexus has got a lot to do with hearing and listening. So you need to start listening to yourself more, getting the relationship between your masculine and feminine. So one way of seeing our masculine and feminine is our logic and our creative, you know? So the, one of the ways I used to do the balancing between the masculine and feminine is you um, to check how, because the right brain controls the left side of the body, which is generally the feminine creative side and the left brain controls the right side. So one has to do a lot with numbers and counting and the other one has a lot to do with um, singing and, and flowing and, and everything else, right? So it's very straight line. And so one of the things I say is count to 10, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, and then sing happy birthday, happy birthday to you. And then can you count to the 10, can you count 10 to the tune of happy birthday? Can you say that again? <laughs> can you count 10 to the tune of happy birthday? So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you gotta, and that will tell you how, that will give you an immediate knowledge of how integrated the left and right brain are to start with mm. and then also start listening to the divine masculine and feminine within yeah i'm we getting in a child wise i'm getting um put put your feelings first and yeah. apparently something about making some hard decisions about moving on from someone yeah so this is the, the in, in this solar plexus on the left mm. you're just not listening to yourself mm. debbie you know the answer you just don't want to hear you don't it, hear it. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the main thing <laughs> have we got a zoom is the other one up on zoom yet or um what's the name what's she Click on participants. No, 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 not yet. Okay, so okay, back over here. Back over here. So, um, if and if anyone wants to do the free Zoom one on live through the week, we'll give a personal half an hour free reading through the week. Um, click on the BeQuest page and and just um, just set a yeah. message there. So, we'll Caroline, give... um, not feel like I'm not moving forward in my in my life. Maybe you need a little bit more information. Yeah. Um, if you want to drop another comment, just to get a bit of clarity, maybe in particular areas of your life, um, as opposed to just in general. Yeah. And if anyone wants um, to come on and go a little bit deeper, there's still plenty of time. Thank you. To thank come on you. to Zoom, so the Zoom links at the top of the um, spiritual. Patricia, bench. Patricia Thomas, I have cervical spine prolapse and knee and fistula issues. So the prolapse, cervical spine prolapse. Um, again, that's one I've just cleared myself. Um, the prolapse generally on the, on the Chinese medicine side of things, it's overthinking, worrying too much. And because it's in the neck ish, because it's in the neck, um, the prolapse, you're overthinking and you're not communicating properly. Um, so you're not communicating your needs or your feelings or your emotions. Um, you're probably very good at communicating everyone else's, but not your own. Um, and which the knee? Doesn't say which knee, knee. fascial issues. So fascial is um, another connection issue. So it's about, you know, being connected with your feelings. It's about overthinking like the, the, the prolapse nearly all the time, all the prolapses, anything to do with flat feet, prolapse discs, um, things like that is nine times out of 10, it's an overthinking issue because it's a stomach meridian needs the earth element, the stomach and spleen is the spleen is what um, strengthens the blood and it's what holds things up. So you want to sort of have, be a bit more earthy and grounded and you want to stop thinking so much. And as soon as you say, stop thinking, it's <laughs> counterintuitive because yeah. you'll just start thinking, how do I stop thinking? How do I stop thinking? How do I stop thinking, John? <laughs> so I'm just going to think myself into stop thinking. You can't stop. So once, once you've been thinking too much and some people like my son who thinks extreme amount, um, you tell him to stop thinking and he, his version of stop thinking would be my version of going insane, right? So, it's like, <laughs> so the ver like one person's a lot of thinking or excessive thinking is another person's not thinking at all. So, but the way that you stop a lot of that thinking is just to get active. You can't stop yourself from thinking. So maybe if you're doing a lot of meditation that start trying to find some active meditation, like I'm not mm. big on yoga myself, but I do like Tai Chi or I do like, um, playing with the, the twirling sticks and stuff like that. Just sticks. The, the, yeah, the, the fighting sticks. The HQ sticks. <laughs> and so, right, Sarah Graham, 
Sarah, if you're still there, I have pain in my pelvis area and have held uh, my periods for the whole month and usually my cycle is perfect. I've had my okay. periods for the whole month. So, so pain in the pelvis area. So this is, um, um, yeah, it could be navel chakra, but I think it might be more to do with base chakra. Mm, getting and back left. Back left. I'm back glad left. you're getting Tools. them all this week. You're welcome, <laughs> so bro. You, you can take all the pains on this week. Thanks, Back mate. left navel. <laughs> back left, um, is, yeah. So is back back left is probably more about the past. <laughs> Sorry, it's just fun watching him <laughs> get the pains for once. <laughs> this is great. I don't have to take them on. You can take them on. I'll read them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so yeah. So if it, if it is more on the, a bit more on the left side, um, it's a it's going to be an emotional blockage. It's, it's navel chakra as well as base chakra. So it's not being grounded enough, and there's going to be an emotional blockage there. It's you know, think again i think sarah this is something we'd have to delve into more yeah. deeply i'm gonna to have to ask you quite a few more questions and find some other issues that are in there with it so you'll either have to come on live on zoom or click on a bequest page and put yourself yeah. down for one of the free readings it'll take probably 20 minutes or half an hour to get through that one yeah um, but you're quite welcome to click on zoom at the top and we can analyze that a bit deeper yep uh the chair yeah definitely we've got that i saw your message we'll definitely schedule in for another free readings yeah thank you um uh, cool cool cool, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. what would be this feeling i get so shasta uh what would be this feeling i get down my right quad it's like small waves traveling down oh look there's 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 the there's two main reasons for that there's like there's lots of reasons for it but there's two main ones um often that's the it's a good it's a good sign it's the if it's the traveling down mm. it's the energies flowing down and grounding um if it's the did you say it's like waves small yeah, waves small wave um yeah. so yeah a lot of that is the waves traveling down and releasing energy out of the body but the right the right quad will be about then probably be a little bit of um fear or limitation in your physical direction yeah or your mask or um is that the female, female yeah. yeah um so maybe about a male or about your physical direction, physical direction. material direction yeah um so the the shaking the waves is an indication that it's not quite flowing through freely so it'll be flowing the you know, energy's flowing down around all the time actually the meridians flow up the front and down the back but when they're in a natural state but the ex, the next layer of energy around the body generally flows down so the down flowing is generally a good sign mm -hmm. that that wavy feeling or the fact that you're picking up more there usually indicates there's some little bit of a resistance or a fear to that but the fact that it's still moving is quite a good thing um Eventually, as you get more sensitive, you start to feel that all over your body when you tune in. Again, it's um, these are questions that we'd have to ask a, a few more questions back because often one thing relates to another. So it could, you could be feeling something in your le in your right quad, and it's got something to do with your left shoulder. You know, it's like quite often where we're feeling a pain or where we're feeling energy is actually the opposite part of, to where the actual real issue is. All right, so Sharon. I, oh, going small. That was more. Uh, yeah, I don't shrink so other people won't feel insecure around you. <laughs> um, yeah, I still haven't seen the request come through for, uh, for Sharon yeah. on Zoom. No. Um, all right, on. Debbie. Debbie, if you're still there, I'm currently waiting for gallbladder to come out. Oh, that's a Billion not a good one. That's not Ouch. a good one, and it's the best one to be avoided if if possible. Um, gallbladder. That that's. I've helped one or two people with similar situations not to go through operations like that because gallbladder is, is in with the liver. And um, so a lot of gallbladder issues, the very word gall means to have a bit of like guts, a bit of like a bit Some, of courage, you know. Something I lacked for a little while. Yeah, a bit of, <laughs> having a bit of gall is like standing up for yourself and yeah. having a bit more courage. And But the, if it's gallbladder is closely related to liver in Chinese medicine, so they're both about the wood, uh, um, wood element Mm. And they both got to do with a, probably um, a lot of anger. And it's also about directing your life. You know, mm. it's the, the gallbladder meridian with the gallbladder liver meridian combination in the Chinese medicine. They call it the director or the, or the general. It directs our life. So when we feel like, like you can get liver depression or gallbladder depression, which is when you see your long-term hopes and dreams is not coming true. Um, and anger and drinking alcohol and that, will be will suppress the anger from coming out so a lot of anger suppressed anger will build up in the gallbladder and then um so like if you do stop drinking like i did two years ago whatever it was um for the first week 
the anger just comes out and it's anger that you don't even know what it's about. It's from 20 years ago or something. It's just, it's just suppressed anger and then you'll just spontaneously get angry at nothing. It's like when you give up cigarettes, you'll spontaneously get grief coming off the lungs. Um, so a lot of that can be those issues. Um, so that's um, gallbladder. It's, yeah, it's a lot to do with that. And so lots of um, anger and the anger is about not, in, it's more so because it's not in the liver, it's in the gallbladder. A lot of the emotional stuff on that is not having the gall, not building up enough gall, standing up for yourself or standing up for what's right, standing up for your kids, or I don't know, for your kids or whatever. But a lot of that sort of stuff has got to do with the gallbladder. Um, so yeah, but again, it's, it's, it's an issue where if it's, if you've got to the point where the gallbladder has got to come out, I'm guaranteed there's a lot of other issues there. So it's another one where we'd have to go a bit more in depth if it take more than a quick little question on something like this. You'd need like half an hour or an hour just to start and make some of the changes. So if you do have, if you do have a few weeks, um, if you do have a few weeks before then I would suggest coming on, getting one of the readings and trying to change some of that stuff. Cause I do know I've had it myself and I've had some other people that have changed some emotional conditions to do with organs and stuff like that. And they've fixed themselves in days or weeks, you know, so. Yeah, so I've had Sally, she's like, well, I've, I've had my gallbladder out. And she says, I do remember feeling, and uh, so I do, I did feel that way about not seeing my last work. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Uh, I had, I was diagnosed like several years ago, I was diagnosed about five times with depression. And um, it's like the doctors, they made me fill out this paper and I said, and I like, you know, I'm a bit um, in your face sometimes. And I said to the doctor, I said, listen here, come on, I don't have fucking depression, right? And it's like, and I said, can somebody with depression say that? And it said, I, I said, I know I tick all the boxes, but I don't have the depression because I've got friends that had mental depression, but you can get liver depression. You can get heart depression. You can get um, spleen depression. They had to do with different things. So that I had liver depression, which was, I didn't think I was going to do this work properly that I'm doing now. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get out far enough in the world and do it because I've been doing it now for 25 years and I just didn't feel like I was doing it enough. And so once I realized that, once I did the Chinese medicine and the Shiatsu, and then I'm going, oh, that's what it is, it's liver depression. So then I just started working on getting my, my life's plan working. And I don't, still don't know what my life's plan is. <laughs> I just know it's this stuff. I love it. I've been doing it for that long. It's, um, this is what I want to do. I don't know how I want to do it, but I just started doing it more and more. Just started working on it and that liver depression lifted mm. just by working on that. Uh, Elizabeth, anything for me, please? I'm exhausted a lot. Exhausted. Generally, I mean, there's a lot of physical reasons for exhaustion. There's a lot of um, stuff with drinking tap water and stuff like that and glands and that being blocked. Um, a lot of adrenal exhaustion because you're in fight or flight all of the time. So um, fight or flight does is, is the space that most of us are in all the time because we're worried about money. When we're worried or we're stressed, we're in fight or flight. And the other, that's, uh, that's the sympathetic nervous system or the parasympathetic. And the other one is rest and digest. And you need a balance of both. We're supposed to be sort of roughly in, in both of them for half of the day. And so the exhaustion is because you're in fight or flight all the time. You know, so... You know how they say to people, you've got to um, chew your food, right? Because that doesn't make you digest properly. That That's not really true. You know, it's like that adds to it. But it's actually when you're chewing, when you go into rest and digest, when you lean back past vertical, when you're leaning back, that's when the, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and you relax and that relaxes the sphinc sphincter muscles in the stomach and that and allows the food to digest. So when you're leaning forward and eating and leaning, the very fact of leaning forward puts you into fight or flight mode. So one of the simple ways of getting out of fight or flight is just lean back past vertical. So when you're eating food, especially lean back and chew past vertical in between every second chew or whatever, and just get into rest and digest a bit more. That's going to be your main fatigue thing. But also a lot of fatigue is most people are just doing everything for everyone else and not doing anything for themselves. It's just, we, we live in this Western world where we're just, everyone's trying to fix everyone else and no one's fixing themselves. Mm. It's like, I know, I'm speaking from experience here, <laughs> <laughs> not from judgment, trust me. <laughs> I was trying to do this way too much and, you know, I was losing contact. Even my children weren't sort of communicating with me anymore. I stopped helping a lot of people who didn't really want my help. They wanted me to do it for them. And that's how we identify it now. We call it um, 
qualifying people. Qualifying. So if we qualify people, um, <laughs> that's what the nice way we call it. Yeah. So <laughs> so people will ask you for help, but they don't want your help. They want you to do it for them. Yeah. Like, you know, somebody might ask you, "Oh, can you help me do um, clean the house?" Right, and you start helping them clean the house. Next minute, they get a phone call and they're out the front and they're fucking staying on the phone for the whole time. It's like, <laughs> and you realise you clean the whole house for them. It's like <laughs> that's just one of the little examples. It's just like so they don't want help; they want you to do it for them. So. Now I say, yeah, I'll help you clean your house. What parts do you need where two of us need to do it? You do the rest. And then when you need two people, you need to move the table or something, I'll come and help you then. Mm -hmm. But, you know, qualify the people. Don't do so much for them. Make them do what they can do. And then you helping somebody means you help them with the simple parts that they can't actually do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of fatigue comes from that, over-helping everyone else. And cool. then you don't have enough time for yourself. Thanks, Elizabeth. All right. Uh, coming to Sally, Sally Flannery. Can you pick up anything for me? I have some joint inflammation, left ankle, right knee, wrists, and two fingers, both hands. Is it fatigue? In inflammation yeah. is exactly what it sounds like. So who's this? Sally. Sally. So Sally, you're getting inflamed. It's very simple. It's like, what's inflammation? You're getting hot under the collar. You're getting, you're, you're getting inflammation as a buildup because which areas was it can you go back sorry uh blah, 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 blah. so okay. left ankle left. right knee wrists and two fingers both hands I'm interested to know which so, fingers too so ankles you know, feet feet and hands basically um are generally about base chakra stuff right so that's the real core stuff that's your your basic survival so your food your shelter um things like that so you're getting inflamed about just, maybe you're doing too much for everyone when it comes to the basics in life food yeah. and shelter and taking care of all that sort of stuff and you're not doing enough for yourself. Um, so there's cause that you're getting inflamed about like whether you're expressing it or not, you could be suppressing it inside yourself saying, oh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm fine. And inside you're going, bullshit. I am bullshit. I fucking want to smash these people. <laughs> yeah, Charles calling bullshit. <laughs> so, so you might think you're not inflamed, but inflammation is nearly always a sign of your, and then you're getting too much fire because in the, in the solar plexus, there's too much fire energy. And there's not enough grounding and not enough earthing because you're, it sounds like, because you've got a lot to do with hands and that. And then also you've got, which knee was it? The right knee. Right knee. So this is Sally. This is Left thing. ankle, right knee. Left ankle is about being flexible, probably about yourself in your direction. Mine yeah. just popped then, my left ankle. Thanks yeah, for that. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, it's about being a bit more flexible in your spiritual or your, because you're a female. I'd say it's a bit more about being flexible in your own direction and supporting yourself in the way that you want to go. And, and especially again, this is down, this is in between base and navel yeah, chakra. Yeah, like real heavy back lift. Yeah, so it's a lot of base chakra stuff here. And the right knee is solar plexus. This is probably being angry at your husband or your kids and male, I would say. And again, not being flexible, not telling them to get off their ass and do their own shit or doing too much for them. I often mm. see a case in that one, but and this will cause inflammation and swelling is doing too much because you're getting inflamed about those situations. But generally the anger cool. has got a lot to do with the knee on the right to do with the male, but most of it's about you not doing for you. <laughs> no, I'm not suppressing. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're expressing it too much then you could be doing the, you could be doing it the other way. You could be um, getting inflamed too much and just and instead just don't get inflamed. Mm. Just go, oh, not my problem. Not my problem. You guys mm. take care of yourself. None of my business is one of my yeah, favorite ones. Yeah, none of our business. None of my business. Like, you know? None of my business. If the kid's not drowning, he's fine. You mm. know? It's like, mm. he's not starving. I could, you you can't hear them screaming downstairs in the basement. Yeah. You're fine. It's like there's, there's no there's no screaming yet. Can't see the bones on their ribs. They're fine. They're going well. <laughs> I'll take care of me and I'll take care of the rest of them. <laughs> or, or the people around you or people at work or whatever. Just go, you know, their problem. Just take care of you. So if you if you are, it could be because you're getting too inflamed too much. Yeah. All right. Um, Where are we? Um, yeah, I'm not having any luck either, Patricia, trying to get a link going. Yeah. Um, I did try actually post a comment to, I'm not sure if it was you or not, but I'll whack it in there again. Yeah. There's a different link to try. If maybe, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, work know. we'll have to have another. Uh, where are we? There's another comment up here I saw. Um, Sammy, Sammy Ann Kirk, having issues with my neck. Can you pick up anything on that? Neck. I was reading the kidney one. That was Sue. Okay, sorry. I'll get back to that. Um, so, having issues with my neck. Sammy, Sammy Ann Kirk, issues with the neck. It yeah. feels like 
Yeah. Again, most neck issues are about communication. Mm. They're about power issues. So the throat chakra has got a lot to do with our power. So giving away our power. Speak your truth to him. So, That's what I just so said. yeah, but it's mainly about communicating to get your power back. It's speak your truth, um, and speak your truth from all levels, not just the mm. truth about your thoughts, about your emotions, about your feelings. You know, you can be like I had one come up with my kids the other day about my kids. My, they're not my kids anymore; they're adults. Um, but you know, just saying how they we've done something that's been a bit of a rift and i said you know it doesn't i'm not bothered by it and mentally i'm not bothered by it but emotionally i am it does mm. it does affect me and i said you know i'm i'm hurt by it that they won't talk to me but i understand that you know it's just all part of the course and it'll yep. change so sometimes we talk ourselves out of it too much and we're not giving our own emotions and our own feelings a chance to express themselves so yes I'm upset, but I know that I won't be tomorrow and that's fine. So just speaking that, speaking your peace. But generally, if it's if it's throat, it's more speaking your peace to get your power back. Mm. Say what you need, what you require, whatever that is. Um, so Sue, anything for me? I had a kidney removed. Or kidney removed. Kidney and bladder are closely associated. So is it left or right kidney, Sue? Um, but generally, kidneys got kidney and bladder's got to do with fear. Um, so that's the primary negative emotion. Um, so if the positive emotion is courage, the negative emotion is fear. So there's a lot of fear build up. Also, I mean, there's there's water, a lot of water, like we won't even go into all the physical issues like water and fluoride and all of that sort of stuff. Um, um, being the, the kidneys being the filters and that. So we'll leave that because it's mil sense. millions of professionals that do that cover that side of it. Um, so, but we, the kidneys and the bladder are the yin and yang of each other. So they will deal with fear. And so, you know, when you've got bladder, urinary problems and that, it's usually being pissed off, you know, and why are you pissed off? Because there's a fear there that you can't express yourself, that you can't say, what you, why do you get pissed off? Because you want to say something and you can't say it. And um, this, this is the primary reason we do this. It's so, um, was it left? Left, or, yeah. Left, so yes, it's... Um, so yeah, so yeah. left. So you would have had a lot of fear on the feminine side. So it would have been probably fear about yourself, um, daughter, your mother. The, usually the females that are close to you, or fear of your spiritual direction. Mm. Um, but there would have been a lot of fear build up over over time. Could have even been fear from past lives. So past lives, yeah. so don't like analyze it too much. But it's you know it's the personal stuff. It also goes into past lives as well. So it could have been past life fears as, on top of that. But fear is the problem. So that you need to, and now that one's been removed, you, uh, it's, uh, you, you'll have to, yeah, well, that's where the courage also mm, comes from. Yeah. From listening to your heart. You need the courage to listen forward. to your heart and move forward. Otherwise, it's kind of the fear is going to build up again on the mm, other side. Yep. And you can't lose two kidneys, as you know. So yep. um, you, you've got to start being fearless and you've got to stop, you know, if you're getting pissed off a lot, you know, that's, the, the bladder um, bladder meridians are going to be affected now because the kidney meridian is going to be weaker because there's only one. But if you start working on courage and stop being fearful, so if you're a bit jitterish, if, if that's your primary meridian as well, then you're going to um, you're going to have to, it's going to be a bit more effort for you to work on not being fearful. So you see, when like my primary meridian is liver, and so the the primary um, emotion that can get triggered. The first one that's easy to get triggered is anger and frustration. Mm. So it's like, ah, so people whose kidney is their primary meridian, yep. they're the ones who are a bit jitterish and you see them, they jump a bit and they get a bit like twitchy and that very easily. They can get very startled very easily. So working on getting rid of fear and getting rid of fear means working on yourself. It means just start doing simple practices like learning how to breathe better that's the main thing that gets rid of fear it's just deep breathing learning how to breathe into your stomach yeah breathe deep down in through the nose and out through the mouth do conscious breathing and it's like that will start to get rid of it and just start telling people use the excuse i've had a fucking kidney removed do you want me to get another one yeah. get out and do your own shit and that's get it. out of my way and you know start it's a lot of this stuff you know it's, it seems to be a theme tonight about expressing yourself it's about telling yeah. people what you need for you um well, because most of the people on this like most of the people on here we all take other people's feelings into account more than we take our own <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're all on this spiritual side that's you know <laughs> so we're, we're the ones who do too much for everyone else and mm. and it's about you know learning how to delegate and learning how to you know it if you give a man a fish you feed him for a day if you teach him how to fish so you know doing things for people they just become more dependent on you 
making them do it for themselves. It's a little bit slower for the short term, but it's much lazier in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that with my kids, <laughs> very much so. Probably time for one more. Yeah. Uh, so we can go on to here. Uh, where was it? Anne Marie Willis. How do I control in a voice? Who is it? It's overpowering and exhausting. Uh, how do I control in a voice? Who is it? So, oh, the inner voice, if you're talking about the head, that's just mm. the intellect, right? Mm. You don't control the intellect mm. um, because trying to control it is exhausting, right? It's just <laughs> identifying it. It's like just once you can identify it, it's like through meditation, through that sound meditation we were talking about earlier. Yep. Start listening to the sounds out further and just listen to the sounds far away like the because like, we're close to the ocean or listen to the cars up the road or something like that. And then you listen to the sounds a bit closer and then you, then you listen to the sounds into the room. And now you notice you're not listening to the sounds up the, up the road anymore, but they're still there, but you're just mm. not paying attention to them. So then as you're listening to each of the sounds, you, you'll have a voice or a dialogue in yourself going, oh, that's a car, that's the ocean, that's the birds. So that voice is another sound. Then you can go, oh, okay, so if I can ignore the car sounds, or I, can, I can ignore that sound. Mm. That's that talking. So just start ignoring it. That's one way to do it. But the other way, that's the longer term better way, is that your intellect, which is that, that voice, that part that analyzes, is, is very mature and it's growing very big. But your identity, you're still identifying yourself as a little human, as a little person. So, Anne Marie. So, you might be identifying yourself as a mother or as, an, um, as a, a Sydney cider or a, is, yeah. an Australian. It's mm. like you've got to start identifying yourself as a child of God, as the whole universe. As an infinite being. You start, you start build your identification up bigger so that it can handle that little voice, that voice. Mm. The, because that voice has gotten too big. And so you need a, like a lot of people say, get rid of your ego, but it's actually increase your identity to see yourself as a child of God or to see yourself as uh, I am the whole cosmos as well as being separate. I'm not the God, but I am God. You know, it's like mm. start increasing your identity. And that will start controlling that voice. And maybe, you know, if at times it's, it's too loud that's going on, just imagine you're turning down a volume knob and you just turn the volume down. Yeah, you know? there's lots of, if, lots if of little here, techniques. You can just turn it down. But don't, what it is, the control word is your problem. Mm. How do I control it? You can't control it. That's the, it's controlling you. The control word is the problem. You don't control it. Just like you don't pay attention to a little kid who's chucking a tantrum. You just go, you're over it now. You're done. Cool. You're finished. Okay, let's get on with it. <laughs> You know, you just ignore it. You just not ignore it, but you pull your attention away from it. When I teach meditation, it's like the first thing I teach is thoughts are like clouds in the sky. They just keep going. You can't stop them, but you can look at them and watch them go across the whole sky and go, oh, look, at now it looks like a rabbit. Oh, now it looks like a dragon, you know, or you can just go, yeah, it's there, but I don't care. I'm just going to look down. And so that's, an, and that's basically one of the other techniques is to look down, breathe into the belly and just start ignoring it. Just treat it like one of those people who go, la, 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 you know, <laughs> or, or do that, you know, yeah. when you hear the thoughts, just do that, you know, when people, when your kids and you, somebody's talking, you just go, la, 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 and talk over them. You can actually do that. It's quite fun. And it, it, it sort of it stops it as well. <laughs> but make it fun. Don't yeah, try the fun. control part is the problem. Yeah. 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 All right. We're done. Okay, guys. So that's our hour. Uh, right. For those that didn't get on the live tonight, um, I think there's three of you, three or four. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll sign you the free sessions that we've got, and um, and we'll organise times yeah. um, this coming week. And the one that was just trying to get on before, we'll yeah, start. Patricia. Patricia, uh, if you want to come on, we're, we'll, we're available in about 15 minutes. If you want to do it now, yeah, otherwise another day. Oh, we can do it. Just message us. We'll, we're, we, if yeah. you do want to do it tonight, we've got some time tonight, Patricia. Cool. Thank you, guys. Love you. See you next week. Alrighty. And uh, thanks for joining. See you later. See you later.